Hello there everybody and welcome back to my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. We are now at Monte Carlo for the Monaco Grand Prix. F1's jewel in the crown and I am trying to get through qualifying. If you haven't seen the last one from Spain, go back and check that one out before you check this one out. This is your last chance before spoilers. We have taken four out of five victories but in spite of that we just could not nail together the perfect lap in q2 at monaco so unfortunately it's gonna be p15 on the grid and that makes things going forward into the race extremely difficult but i am confident that we can still get some good points out of this Formula One returns to Monte Carlo once again today, home to the world-famous Monte Carlo Casino, first opened in 1863. And, of course, a certain road race, first held here in 1929. There's no greater an occasion, no more valuable a win than the Monaco Grand Prix. The prestigious Circuit de Monaco then, it's not all that dissimilar today to the layout that made its debut almost a century ago. It's two miles and 19 corners through the streets of Monte Carlo. And although the average lap speed of around 93 miles per hour is the lowest of the season, the tiny margins for error make it the natural habitat of the safety car. And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Ant, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of turn one. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? Well, the throttle goes both ways, Crofty. You've got to have the discipline not to try and win the race on the first lap, so always be prepared to lift early and give those around you more space. Trying to be the last of the late breakers with half a dozen cars around you may pay off from time to time, but it's also a great way to lose your front wing. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Sainz, Pierre Gasly and Bottas, Ocon and Robert Schwartzman, Sonoda, Ricardo, Lance Stroll, Joker, Vettel, Norris and Guan Yu Zhou and Callum Eilert, Latifi, Mick Schumacher, Markelov and Nikita Mazepin. That's it then. 39 laps then of the toughest circuit on the calendar. Five red lights. It's lights out and away we go. We've made a relatively good start. We're going to try and cover off anyone that's thinking of getting a cheap move in on us here. We're going to go up the inside of Stroll and what I think is Ricardo, But they're not having any of that. In fact, Stroll barging me to the right. Making sure that I can't get through side by side with Ricardo. They're battling over 12th place, but I think Stroll's going to have to back out of that one. And we've got Norris trying it round the outside. That's not going to work. We're going to make an ambitious dive down the inside here to take P12. That has worked a treat for us. We're going to take another dive while the cars have little to no momentum round the hairpin. We tried to get two cars, but we only got one. And that's the Ferrari of Robert Schwartzman that has been demoted down to P12. But we are up into P11 then, and we are behind Yuki Sonoda. So that's a better start than what I could have hoped for. And now we're trying to stay behind Sonoda, but I struggle with this circuit. Monte Carlo, for me, is a nightmare. And I just don't see... I don't feel that we've got great pace around here. But I'm hoping that we can just move forward in, as the race progresses. Leclerc says the, sets the fastest lap then. He is on form here, and my teammate going for the win, and I hope he takes it. We have dropped a little bit back from Sonoda here, but we've pulled out from Ricardo and Vettel, who are keeping the pack behind them nicely held up. So I'm hoping that when some of the front runners pit, they get stuck behind them for a few laps so we can make the advantage. That is not the chicane, and I've hit the wall, and you know what? I kind of deserved that. I didn't take the chicane. I went across it, got on the throttle too early, into the barrier, and round it goes. I've lost the front wing. That is a disaster for my race, but I'm blocking the track, trying to fix my mistake, and, well, that has caused devastation behind me. So, I couldn't do anything about that, though. I was blocking... I had to try and recover it, and I was blocking the circuit... 
safety car deployed. I've got a five second time penalty. So I can serve that while making my pit stop. Meanwhile, there's a Haas there that's broken beyond repair. That is Nikita Mazepin, who will be retiring with a damaged car. Meanwhile, I've now made it into the pit lane. And we will be taking on a new front wing and a set of soft medium tyres. I don't know if these will make the end. So a little bit of wishful thinking here, hoping that they will. But we'll see how far we can take them. What, right, the race has resumed. We're P16 now. And once again, we find ourselves behind the Ferrari of Robert Schwartzman, who was pitted, and he's gone onto the soft tyre. Well, that's just shot his race. He started on the mediums. He probably should have continued. I don't know why he bothered to pit, but there's Markelov being lapped by us now. So we've got a couple of cars in the mix that are needing to be lapped. I should have had a look at Schwartzman there, but it just wasn't on. Callum Eilat behind me in 17th on the hard tyres, so the only one of all the cars around me that seem to make a wise choice with their strategy there. Everyone that's pitted and taken on softs has just ruined their race. Mick Schumacher now letting me go, but I can't seem to find a way past Schwartzman still. And this is becoming a bit of a thorn in my side, as we've got another slow car in front of us. I believe that's Guan Yu Zhou having to get out of the way as well. He's taken on hard tyres, but... Unfortunately for him, he lost a lap, so that's really going to hurt him. But Callum Eilat is going to the end of the race, so he could really factor into this a little bit later on. Right, Leclerc is now right behind me as I, I'm stuck behind Schwartzman. And I figure that Leclerc may be quicker than me to have a go on the fresh tyres, so I'm not wasting any time holding him up. I let him go, and Leclerc goes off into the distance, so... I be fully believe that he can grab the win in this race, which is why I let him through, why I didn't want to hold him up. And a few laps later, Verstappen has made his stop. He's come out just behind me. And Sebastian Vettel's out of the race. You can see him to the right after okay, the chicane. He just simply pulled off to the side. His race is run, as now I'm trying to keep Max Verstappen behind me. And again, I just don't know how long these tyres are going to last. We're only on lap 13 out of 39. There's still a very long way to take these tyres. But I'm doing some quick maths and trying to figure out, will they go to the end? They'll be very shocked by the time the end comes if I try. Verstappen's having a look as I've got a little bit squirrely out of the last corner. But nothing to worry about there. Schwartzman now holding Leclerc up. But Schwartzman has made his way into the pits. Leclerc... Verstappen and Eilat all gaining place now. And like I said, Eilat could really factor into this a bit later. Right, we're watching myself now tucked up behind Leclerc, who's tucked up behind another car. And it looks like we've gone very wide there. We're going to clip the wall. No, we haven't. And we've gone into Verstappen. And Verstappen's pushed us into the wall. We've gone with him. Please I made a down. big mistake around that left-hander. And Let's get some heat into those caught Verstappen with me as I recovered. Oh, that's a disaster for my race. I have had to pit again for another set of mediums, but this time, these ones will go to the end. So, and I've picked up a three-second time penalty for my troubles as well, but that was a silly mistake to make, and I caught the snapping out with my mistake. We didn't even touch the wall in the end until we caught the snapping, which is very unfortunate for Max. But it's very fortunate for ourselves. It's always me going into a Red Bull, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, we're now watching. I'm tucked up behind a group of cars. One ahead of Max is Schwartzman. We're going to take a look at Max down the inside of the hairpin. We force our way through at the hairpin. We've gained a place up into P14. And I swear I've spent the vast majority of this race staring at a Ferrari rear wing. Specifically, Robert Schwartzman. So, I feel like I've spent too long behind him. I now want to get in front of him. And he's going to be backed up into the hairpin. Which gives me an opportunity to take the place from him when we go around there. But this is all about patience. I've got to wait until I'm close enough to make the lunge. Patience, though, it, it, it's quite taxing. Because you just want to dive through. And we go for the move this time round. And we are successful. I was just going on to say, you just want to dive through at Monaco. The temptation to send it is always huge, but you have to be sure you can complete the move at Monaco. Otherwise, you'll find yourself with car damage and falling down the field again. Not that there's much further I can fall down at the moment from P13. 
But anyway, next up is Lando Norris. He is going to be my next victim here. And it's going to be the same move while everyone backs up at the hairpin. I get more momentum, go down the inside and complete the overtake. That's a very slow and steady overtake to complete though, but we have done it. And I think Lando making that one just a little bit difficult. Next lap is Esteban Ocon. This should be an easy one. That is an easy one. Ocon just gives me the space. Next up, Christian Lundgaard. We're just picking him off one by one here. Lundgaard is next in P9. This is quite an astounding recovery drive now, especially at Monaco where it's very difficult to overtake. But next up is Lundgaard, and I wonder who is leading this train. That is what I want to know. Lundgaard has been overtaken now. Down the inside, another textbook manoeuvre. Next up is Giovinazzi, and then it's Bottas ahead of him. I still can't see who's leading this tra train. Right, next up, Giovinazzi. We're going to try and get past him here using the same trick that we've used time and time again. And Giovinazzi, well, he just backed out of that one completely, didn't he? In fact, he just stopped. He just caught, well, he's caused a bit of a traffic jam there. That's, and the safety car's come out. The safety car is out because of that traffic jam that Giovinazzi seemed to cause by coming to a stop. And, well, that's going to bring some of the cars together. Right, here we go again. Six laps to go. Next up, Valtteri Bottas. I couldn't really afford a safety car with my three second penalty. And that is for track extending, which at Monaco is only too easy to do. And Sainz is in sixth. Is that Callum Eilot in fifth place? As we dive down the inside of Bottas, who just gives us an infinite amount of room. In fact, he's just done the same thing. He's come to a complete stop. And once again, there is a major traffic jam at the hairpin. We didn't do anything to Bottas to make him do that. He just stopped by himself. He had plenty of room around the outside there. He could have kept that moving. But he just stops. And he's causing an absolute jam of cars. As we've got an Alfa Romeo trying to make it through. We've got George Russell in the Red Bull trying to make it through. But he's got damage. There's another car that's got into that and taken damage. That is just chaos. Latifi moving up to ninth in the alpha out of all of that, but unfortunately he clipped his front wing, so he's going to have to pit. That won't be points for him. We've got Carlos sides now. Next up in six, if we go for the dive, oh, Carlos has turned in, and we that was a day late and a dollar short from us, and Carlos will have damage from that. That was a very late move, and Carlos just didn't see it coming at all. And that is going to be P5 for us. Bottas is in P6, and he is within three seconds of me, so I'm not really worried about that, because he has a five-second penalty. So that's going to counteract him. The next car that's really a threat to me is Giovinazzi, and he's 9.4 seconds behind, as I'm getting ever closer to Callum Mylot in fifth. That decision to pit under the safety car and take on hard tyres has been a masterstroke as I'm trying to get close and just find a way to send one on him. Charles Leclerc that has taken the win. I've got into Callum Eilot there. I'm going to go across the chicane. Bottas up my inside of Raskas. I really should just let him go because I'm still going to have the place. But I'm fighting for the position on track anyway. Bottas has hit me. And round we go. And that is going to cause yet another traffic jam. I've broken my wing. And, wow, that was an ambitious one from Bottas. I feel like he probably should have backed out. But also, I feel like we should have backed out because we had that penalty. He had that penalty anyway. It's going to be P7 for us because Giovinazzi, on account of my penalty, gets up to P6 in the end. What set them apart from the rest? Well, you know what they say. To finish first, first you have to finish. And that fact was clear today with lots of retirements having a big effect on the outcome of the race. As a driver, you tend to keep reliability concerns to the back of your mind and just focus on what's in front of you. But for the teams, races like this can be very stressful. Well, I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there and it's great to see them make their way out onto the podium.
It wouldn't be a Monaco Grand Prix career mode race if it didn't throw up a race of chaos, and that is what we've had. But Charles Leclerc has finally won his home race. So Leclerc is the winner of the Monaco Grand Prix. Yuki Sonoda, a brilliant podium in second for Alpha Tauri, and Daniel Ricciardo making it to third, but it's Dazzly in fourth. So Alpha Tauri finally finding that strong form again. Callum Eilat with that masterful decision rounding out the top five. And Leclerc has now got to within 40 points of my championship lead. So my championship lead isn't as invincible as once I thought. George Russell is now third, Verstappen fourth, Sainz fifth, carrying the Ferrari team. And I believe we are still yet to see points from Robert Schwartzman, Carlos's teammate. So I think Ferrari... Oof, it's it's not looking good for you, sir. It's not looking good. But, um, wow, what a race. And Alpha Tauri finally, after an anonymous start to the season, finding that form again. It's Sonoda's second podium of the year, of course, with his first podium being in Bahrain. Well, thank you for watching. Please leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. And until the next time, TTFN, guys, to tough for now.